This video is going to explain why we moved our electronics on our 2019 Jayco Seneca. We did this really for three reasons. One, we wanted to have easier access to the automatic transfer switch because currently it was underneath the bed. Second, we wanted to prep our system for the smart switch and have that ready to go when we receive that. And third, we wanted to make the HVAC system available to run not just on the shore power and generator, which it does by default, but also have it be able to run off the inverter so we can run it from our solar panels. So we're going to show you those three things. We did not do the step-by-step -step how to. We actually brought in an electrician to help do this, but we will um, kind of show you generally how we adjusted all the electronics. By default on the Seneca, the automatic transfer switch is underneath the bed. This is behind a back access panel, and when we pulled it, we could also see that some of the mice had been hanging out in here. And this is after Jeremy's made the move. So this was where our automatic transfer switch used to be. And we took that out here, and we made it more accessible by putting this up here, this comes from the generator and um, goes into this box now. This was our old shore power and that comes in, well, shore power comes in here. Um, and then this comes from the panel. So it just winds back and around here. So you have four wires coming in here. You have the generator, you have the previous shore power which we cut off down there. We have the new wire, which we were able to run through a two inch condo when I put above the driver side wheel well. And, uh, and so we were able to get this, this is seven eighths inch uh, uh, bundled wire up, each of which have a six gauge wire in there. So this is your regular 50 amp uh, wire and then this is our shore power. And so we were able to get all four of these into this box. This becomes kind of our junction box or a relay box. And then we go down uh, right through here. Um, and we were just able to break away the foam and I'll re-foam that. But it worked out really well. I mean, literally the only new wire I ran was this. And I didn't even have to cut a hole in the floor. I mean, it literally was as easy as it gets. So these are mislabeled in here. Um, I figured out our front AC unit is on this 20 amp breaker, our HVAC unit. And um, this is a sub panel for your inverter. Um, and uh, so right now this is the only section that's powered by the inverter. Uh, as well as all your DC lights, of course. So this is our automatic transfer switch that was underneath our bed. Um, this is our shore power 50 amp uh, wire that comes up onto the side here. Uh, if you look onto the side, you just take this panel off. This is a short. This is just a junction box for this um, shore power wire that goes up into your uh, underneath your bed. Um, so we disconnected it here. So now this goes into the wall and we did a quick uh, jumper that goes from this over to the um, automatic transfer switch. So this is our shore power on top and then on bottom is our generator power. And then what we did <clears throat> was from our um, breaker box, we ran a uh, the, this is a home run wire that goes all the way up to the breaker box down here and then over to this uh, gray box here. And the reason why we did this as a, as a, uh, a sub panel, if you will, with a little jumper through there is because we wanted it easy to, to change this out for our smart panel system, the SPS uh, that we are going to replace it with once that's available. And then from there, we'll run a wire over to our inverter, which is on the other side there. Um, and the inverter uh, will then feed that smart uh, panel as well. And then we'll be able to pull from any of those sources of power and it blends the power to produce your desired um, power. So if your desired power is 50 amps, 
it can blend a 20 amp from plug-in at somebody's garage to um, your inverter battery bank uh, capacity. Uh, and then if you really needed it, you could blend it into your generator power as well. Your automatic transfer switch is still necessary because you can still switch between the generator power and the shoreline uh, or the, uh, yeah, uh, as it relates to power in your uh, panel. So that's it. So the purpose of this, <clears throat> moving the automatic transfer switch down here, is that we're getting ready for a smart uh, switch, um, which is really exciting because the smart switch allows you to blend different uh, electrical inputs uh, to produce a desired electrical output. So if you have, um, if you're in a place where you can only plug into 15 amps, for example, or if you your battery bank is is enough to give a little bit, but it's not enough to do the full load. Um, you can blend your generator with your battery bank, or you can blend a, a 15 amp shore power with uh, with your generator, with your battery bank, whatever you need to, it uh, it can help you do uh, the, the desired output. So really an exciting um, new uh, advance that we can put links for. Um, but in order to prepare for that, you need a, you need a place to put it. And so this is where we decided to put it. And, and in addition to that, I really wanted to move the electrical from underneath the bed down into here. So this is where we're gonna keep our automatic transfer switch now. Um, and this will allow us to be able to uh, work on things if we wanted to. Um, I've already uh, thought about uh, some, some ways in which we can uh, add to the battery bank in here. And so this, is, this area is increasingly becoming an, an accessible area where we can work on power, um, which is great. And we'll also store things in here, but uh, um, this is the side of the coach where we're not really, we're not really using it for a day-to-day -day storage. We're leaving camp. We're going to unplug from shore power. Now we are running only on our battery banks. If you look in here, you can see that this is a junction box and this is a wire that used to go to the AC in on the uh, inverter. I wired that into the, uh, to the surge guard ATM and this is hot when there is no, when there is shore power. It essentially is an AC in to let the inverter know not to run. But as soon as the charge comes off from this, meaning you've, dis, you've, disconnect, you've disconnected from shore power and now there is no longer a charge sent from this over to the AC in button, AC in input on the inverter. Now you are now generating power from your battery bank and sending AC out. I have two wires there. Uh, they're both going to the AC out one port. The AC out two port appears to have a relay switch for which I need to do some research to figure out what's going on with that. I don't know if it's a programmable or what, but I have them both onto the AC out. They then go all the way up to our breaker box. Okay, we're driving down the road. We're completely detached. Driving down the road, we're completely detached. Before we leave, we need to do a couple things in our breaker panel. So our sub panel, as you can see, this is still wired. You can see we have light. We are still on hot with our breaker panel. But on this, this has our uh, main shore power. We need to turn our shore power off. We turn our inverter, I put the inverter into this, we turn our inverter on. When we turn our inverter on, we readjusted the panel so that this is the back AC, this is the front HC or HVAC unit. So front uh, is 20, back is 15. The front that's on 20, we ran an ongoing run uh, amperage is about four to five amps for an ongoing run amperage. For the back, the ongoing run amperage was about two to three. The front is 28,000. The back, I believe, is 14,000, roughly half of the BTUs in the back compared to the front. So you'd expect increasing amperage on the front. The front startup was somewhere between eight and 10 max, but really was leveling in more six to eight once you've run it um, for startup amperage. So when you're running it 
uh, and you haven't run it in a while, your capacitor is going to have some bleed and it's not going to have as much startup amperage or it's going to require more startup amperage. But if it's kicking on and off, your capacitor is going to be nice and full and charged. And so that is going to pull only six amps with the easy start on the front 28,000 BTU AC unit, which is more than the 14,000 BTU unit, which was more around the lines of 9 to 11 amps. So it was 2 to 3 amps less, even with a, a, a twice the strength of a BTU, uh, even after the compressor kicked in on the front uh, or on the on the front as it was to the back, um, if that makes any sense. So that that's all the advantage of the Easy Start, which I plan to put on the back as well. But the run amperage was was minimal, and I think we should be able to get several hours at four to five amps of run amperage for that front HVAC unit. We won't be able to run both of these uh, at the same time, so we could theoretically turn the back one off for safety uh, and only run the front one during the day. And at night, we can run the back one and by the bedrooms, the smaller unit, and keep the front one off during the day. Um, so to that end, let's go ahead and test the front one. Wow, that only took a few seconds. And it's already it's blowing impressive. cold water, yeah. or cold air. So that's all on battery power. Tank heaters automatic transfer switch, junction box where the smart switch is going to go when we get that. You can see cords running down. Turbo's got some bus bars down there. There's the solar controller and the inverter. We plan to add another inverter and a transformer in order to put more things on the panel over to the inverter charge when we want to use the solar to power things.